All right, let's turn to 523 in your hymnal. 523, a flag to follow. Let's all stand together as we sing. 523. I sought a flag to follow, a cause for which to stand. I sought a valiant leader who could my love command. I sought a stirring talent, some noble work to try, to give my life fulfillment, my dreams to satisfy. I found them all in Jesus. The Take a moment, greet one another, make somebody feel welcome. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together. Sing that last together. I sought for satisfaction, for yearning deep within. I sought for full deliverance from chains of guilt and sin. I sought for peace and pardon, for freedom from my sin. I sought a hope to cling to. singing be seated if you would um just listen carefully if you would now the the regular schedule this week as far as uh, thursday night uh with our down at the crc with the inside are you inside friday night here uh with performers unanimous had a great friday night last week by the way for the uh, fifth anniversary and uh, appreciate those of you who help with that and we'll have a great night tomorrow night as well all right and then um out at london on saturday with the are you inside we'll still have our soul winning and bus visitation at 10 a.m. Uh, here at the church. And then, of course, regular services uh, on Sunday. All right. Um, I did want to, there, there's some brochures. I think they might be down on the table. Uh, the 41st Annual Ladies Retreat down at Heritage Baptist Church in Canal Winchester. Uh, it's called Life's a Journey Just Passing Through, October 14 and 15. These are down there, ladies. If you're interested, uh, pick one up. 
and uh, that's available for you. Brother Bowman is here. Brother Bowman has a conference coming up on September the 10th uh, right here in Columbus, and uh, I wanted him to come and say a few words about that. And uh, Brother Bowman, you come and tell us about your conference. Good to be back here at the church. Again, um, this Saturday, September 10th, we're having a conference against sex trafficking called Not For Sale. Um, Ohio's the fifth most dangerous state in the union with sex trafficking. And um, your church is helping in some different ways. So first of all, I want to say thank you very much, Pastor and Church. Uh, we do um, need some other ways of how, for example, uh, we're still short on some volunteers. If you'd like to be a volunteer Friday or Saturday, let me know. Um, we also need um, baked goods, if you would like us to bake us some goods so we can sell and raise money for orphanages. And just some other things, you can see me after church. and Or you can visit our website at www.orphanfrontier and just click on the link that says Not For Sale Conference. And we're going to have government officials and organizational leaders, and we need soul winners. And y'all, if you don't want to volunteer, just come to the conference. I promise you're going to enjoy and learn a lot. So thank you, and I look forward to talking to some people um, tonight. Thank you, Pastor. It's a conference sep Saturday, September 10th. If you're interested in helping with that, uh, see Brother Bowman. He can uh, show you where you can get plugged in and uh, be part of that and uh, help um, in the conference there. It's at, um, that's Heritage too, isn't Heritage it? Baptist. Heritage Free Will Baptist uh, on... Okay. Obets Road in Columbus, okay, on uh, Saturday, September 10th, okay, so you see Brother Bowman, if you can help, I know he'll appreciate that, and uh, that's a good cause. Um, Brother Moreland, do you have some guests with you tonight? Do you know those folks in that row with you? Do you? Okay, and uh, who we have visiting with us. These are folks who I think Brother Moreland met down at uh, BBTI, am I right? And uh, do you want to introduce yourself and your family? Okay, that's fine. Go right ahead, Brother Nate. Amen. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. Romania, great. Good to have you tonight, man. Thanks for coming and stopping in. That's wonderful. Romania, and you're leaving in January. Yes. Praise the Lord. All right. And uh, that's good. Good to have you tonight. Looking to see. Anybody else here this evening? Can I see our friend? Diane Stillner's there. Okay, man. I didn't <laughs> sit behind Ron Moreland. Don't see you over there. And uh, Amen. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? Oh, I'm sorry. And uh, hey, good to see Diane here. All right, let's give her a hand. Amen. And Cheryl Polable too back there. Good to have Cheryl back. Wonderful. That's great. All right. I think we're ready for the offering now, fellas. You want to come? And we'll get our offering tonight. And of course, offering will go to the Fry family and uh, be a blessing to them. And uh, let's give generously to them tonight and be a blessing to them on their deputation. All right. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, thank you for the privilege it's ours to give, and thank you, Lord, for the fries who've come our way tonight. Lord, I pray your blessing upon our offering now that it will, Lord, not only take care of some needs they have, but maybe take care of some wants they, they, they would like to have. And so, Lord, let it be a blessing to them tonight and continue to minister through them to us this evening. In Jesus' name, amen.
Miss Linky, good to see you here tonight too. I'm sorry, you're you're one of us when you come now, all right? But it's it's good to have you. Glad you're visiting. All right. Who's singing? You are. You're singing. Both of you are going to sing. All right. Mrs. Fry and Brother Fry are going to sing, and then he's going to preach to us tonight. All right. So listen carefully. Get your Bible ready, and uh, right after they sing, he'll bring the message. <laughs> when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot. Thou hast taught me to say, It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. With my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Yo, sure. Shang Ping An Ru Jang Ho Ping Yo Wen Yo Shi Bei Shang Lai Su Lang Gwen Bu Duan Ho Huan Jing Ju Yi Jia Jia Wa Shuo Wo Xing Ling De An Ning De An Ning Wo Xing Ling Washing Ling, Washing Ling, Washing Ling, My sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross. And I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul and Lord. Haste the day when my face shall be sighed. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound. And the Lord shall descend, even so, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. All righty, I'm going to switch over to this one. I think I have it on. There we go. All right. Well, very good. Well, you all like jokes at all? You like jokes? I don't know if you like jokes or not. But uh, this, this one I actually got from a uh, Chinese man. There's this, uh, in, if you speak another language, they don't always translate. But the Xavier, you probably know that. Um, jokes don't always translate from language to language. And, uh, but a Chinese guy told me this one, so, and I thought it was pretty funny, so maybe you'll think the same. A guy didn't know English very good, and he goes to, comes to America. And he goes to a hotel, and he's in the hotel. He gets his room, and he goes up, and there he is. He sets down his bags and such, and he's getting settled. And all of a sudden, he hears something squeaking. And he's thinking, what is this? And uh, so he's going, he's looking around. All of a sudden, sure enough, there comes out a little mouse, and it comes running along. He says, oh, no. So he looks around, you know, the room, and they don't give him brooms and stuff in a, you know, a hotel room. So he's, okay, he's got a towel, and he's trying to, you know, follow this mouse around. He's not very successful with it. He can't chase it. Apparently the 
the American mice are maybe a little faster than the Chinese mice, you know, and it's, it's getting around him, getting past him, and he's, so he's frustrated, he says, forget it. So he picks up the phone, and remember, his English is not very good, so he picks up the phone, and he's trying, you know, he calls the front desk, you know, presses zero, and it rings, and the person answers, and he says, uh, uh, I need someone to come to my room. Uh, okay, all right, well, what do you need? Do we need to bring something? Do you need an iron? Did we forget a towel, or, you know, what do you need? No, 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 I, I need someone to come to my room right now. Okay, well, what do you need? Well, um, well, uh, he's trying to think, how do I say? How do I say it? How do I say I've got a mouse in my room? Well, what do I say? Um, ah, and he comes on it. Oh, you know Tom and Jerry? Oh, Jerry is here. So there it was. So. There it is. Well, tonight we're going to talk about something that uh, maybe we should have kept the little kids in here. I don't know. You might, uh, might be an elementary lesson. I'm not sure. You have to remember I've been teaching uh, kids for the last four years, five years, I guess, so, or so in China. But we're going to talk about obedience, all right? So I know this is an older crowd, but we're going to talk about obedience tonight. So we're going to start off in, who can tell me what is a good verse for obedience for children? We're going to start off there, though. I know we don't have kids. Ephes- yeah, Ephesians, I think the rest, everybody just blurted it out. You all weren't very, a very obedient crowd. <laughs> what is it, class? Ephesians 6, 1. Let's go there. Okay, let's go to Ephesians 6, 1. We're not going to stay there, though, okay? So rest assured. Ephesians 6, 1. I don't know if this was the first verse that my parents taught me. I'm not sure, but it was uh, one of the first ones. Ephesians 6, 1. Now let's go ahead and let's stand. Ephesians 6 and verse 1. Ready? Let's all read it together in unison. Here we go. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for allowing us to be here. I pray that you would take this uh, pretty simple message, but I pray that you would use it as you see fit. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. I pray that you would bless pastor in this church. And Father, I pray that they would be a strong and vibrant witness for you in this area. Father, they're considering sending us to a foreign country to give the gospel but I pray that they would remember that they have a job to do here also. And I pray that you would help them to be strong and vibrant in that, and that they would be a bright light in a very ever-darkening world. We love you. Please help me to step out of the way, and I pray that you would speak through me, that you would help them to see you in the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, you may be seated. You know, oftentimes we tell children, you know, um, you, you need to obey. But what we're going to talk about is, is the, the role that we have in obedience. You know, my, my dad taught, my dad was in junior church. He was the, the junior church preacher for a long time. He's pastoring now. He's been pastoring for, I believe, seven years, something like that. Coming on seven years, I believe, in March. And, uh, but, you know, he was an assistant pastor, bus director, all those different things that are involved in that. And he would teach uh, in junior church, you know, obedience. Do it the first time, do it right away, and do it with a good attitude. He would talk about that. And he said if, if one of those elements are, are missing, then it's, it's not true obedience. And so, you know, he would illustrate it. You know, if, if there's a pen on the floor and your mom says, uh, um, Stephen, I want you to go pick up the pen. And so she says, Stephen, go pick up the pen. Stephen, go pick up the pen. And I do it on the second time. It's not obedience. I go do it. It's only obedience if I do it the first time. Stephen, go pick up the pen. Do it the first time and do it right away. Mom, I, I'm, I'm, I'm playing my video game. I'm over here. Oh, I, just, I just got oh, I got one more level. Can you give me about five minutes? Oh. Ah. Okay, Mom, I'm going to take care of that right now. Got it. That's not obedience. Why? Because I didn't do it the... I did it the first time, but I didn't do it right away. And then, Stephen, go pick up the pen. Oh, what do you always ask me to go pick up the pen? Can't you ask one of my sisters? Me. I 
was asking me to pick up the stinking pen. Here you go, Mom. Yeah, I did it the first time. I did it right, well, kind of right away. But I did not do it with a good attitude. And he would say, you know, do it the first time, do it right away with a good attitude. You know, we teach it to kids, and we say, yeah, that's right. You know, my kids, they need to know obedience. But as we look at this a little later, we're going to look at a guy, and don't get ahead of me, we're going to look at a guy, he didn't obey very well. We're going to look at a story of a guy who didn't obey very well. Okay? So we want the kids to learn this. But, you know, oftentimes, you know, as a guy, you know, the Bible says, you know, wives submit, you know, so we'll say, well, you know what, the ladies, hey, boy, that's right, you women, you need to make sure you submit, right? But you know what? There's some things that we as guys have to do. We, 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 got, we got a lot of work, too. And uh, that's true, the ladies, they, they are supposed to do that. But you know what, there's, there's, there's uh, we've got a lot of work also. Let's go to Hebrews 13, 17. Let's go to Hebrews 13, 17. Hebrews 13, 17. Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. You know, I believe that there are people that God has given us that can see further than we can. You know, in the old days when they'd have those walls around a city, you know, you had the watchtowers. They were up, and they, could, they were higher than the rest of the wall, and the purpose was, was for them to be able to look out and see the enemy that was coming. If you've ever, uh, we went to the Great Wall. My wife and I have been there, been there once. It's, it's pretty awesome. It's, you know, just so long and big and massive. And, uh, you know, just to see that. And apparently there's parts of it, uh, we watched a documentary recently, and it's different in different places of China, how the wall was built different ways, and it kind of looks different, not the doesn't all look the way it does in Beijing if you were to go visit it there, you know, that big, you know, the picturesque, uh, the way it looks there. It's not all that way, but they would have those watchtowers and they'd look out. And they could see the, oh, here comes the Manchus, you know, they're, here they come, they're attacking, okay, lock the gates, send for reinforcements, send for the guards, defend. The, why? Because they could see further. Well, God gives us authorities. You know, a, ch- a child, well, I want to play in the street. But mommy said not to. Daddy said not to. Well, if they're, if they're smart, and if the parent's smart, they'll make them obey. But the, that child will obey. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. What we see here, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. So it's something that we have to put ourselves under. Why? For they watch for your souls. You know, I'm very, I mentioned in my video, us coming back to America to go on deputation, I could still be in China as a teacher. We wanted to do more. We wanted to be more effective for the Lord. And we felt that we could be. But it wasn't a decision that I made on a whim and said, you know what, let's do this. No, it, it, it went through at least three counselors. You know, just what, what, is, what is God's timing? You know what, I wanted to do it about three years and six months before. But that wasn't God's timing. Why? Because there's people that can see further than we can. We have to trust their judgment. We have to look ahead and see what is, what is going on. And submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. You know, when I was teaching fifth grade in America, I had some students, and I'm, I'm sure if I thought about it long enough, I'd find some, some students in China also. But, you know, I taught those, those students basically, basically all the subjects. You know, there were some students that I wasn't real proud of their progress. But there also wasn't much I could do about it because they wouldn't listen to their teacher. They wouldn't follow. They wouldn't do what I was trying to help them succeed. And some of them failed that year. Was I happy about that? No. It brought grief to me. But what could I do? I've talked to your parents. I've sent you to the office. I don't know how many times. You won't turn in your homework. You won't do what I've tried to teach you to do. Do you understand, son, that I'm trying to help you? And so, I guess they did fifth grade again. But if we follow what God has for us, God has this figured out. They must give account that they may do it with joy 
and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. You know, it wasn't real profitable for those students. Yeah, I guess they got, they probably enjoyed those two years in fifth grade more than they enjoyed any other year, I suppose. You know, as, as uh, people like to say, jokingly. You know, but, but how much easier would it have been for them just to do what they were supposed to do? Let's go to 1 Peter 2. Let's go to 1 Peter 2. Obey. Obey. First Peter chapter two and verse thirteen. And we're going to read down through verse twenty three. So ten verses there. I'll tell you what, I'll read the first verse, then let's all read the second verse together, and so on and so forth. Ready? So we're in 1 Peter 2, starting with verse 13. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. I'm sorry, I was supposed to have you read with me on 14. Boy, I blew right through that, didn't I? I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's try verse 15 all together. Ready? Here we go. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Ready? Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants, be subject to your own masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently. But, if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Ready? Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Very good. So we see here, sometimes we have things come our way that we don't necessarily understand. And I, I feel like I'm, I'm not, uh, I have not maybe earned the right to say this from my own experience, but I can stand boldly behind the word of God because the word of God is eternal. And though I maybe not have, I have not personally suffered these great hardships or trials necessarily. When there are things that come into our life, oftentimes I think of the story of Joseph in the Old Testament. You know, Joseph went through some tremendous trials and hardships, but it was for a purpose. Do you sense the bitterness when Joseph tells his brethren, when he reveals himself to them? Listen, you all meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Oh, now daddy's died. Years later, daddy's passed away. Okay, let's send somebody to Joseph. Hey, you know, please forgive us. He says, hey guys, you meant it for evil, God meant it for good. And I'm paraphrasing. But you know, God had a plan in that, and Joseph understood, you know what? I had a dream that someday I would rule, and they would bow down to me. It happened, but it didn't quite happen the way I wanted it to. It didn't quite happen the way I had in mind. But God used it for good. You know, sometimes we, we go through things and we say, why is this happening? This is not just. This is not the right way. But what did Jesus say? Ye are the light of the world. Ye are the salt of the earth. You know, uh, you, don't put a, you don't put a candle... You know, if, if, the, if the power went out, and I oftentimes like it when the electricity goes out. It's like, wow, where it's like we're back in the olden days, you know, or old-fashioned Sunday, you know. And, but, but if it were to be old-fashioned Sunday or the power to go out, y'all get a lot of snow here? Yeah? Okay. Okay, so power goes out, and uh, so you got a few of these electric lanterns, you know. Every year at my house, basically, in my family, we get a new flashlight or three. You know, it's just the thing we do, you know, pocket knives and... Uh, flashlights, my wife, she knows how true that is, you know, she, she got a headlamp for Christmas, you know, can you imagine Mrs. Fry wearing around a headlamp, but she got one, you know, so, but, but if the power were to go out, would you take this, you know, this lantern and stick it back here to help illuminate the whole 
room? No, you'd stick it here, or you know, you'd hang it from the ceiling fan, or you'd put it. Why? Because you want maximum illumination from it, right? Well, what is happening in our ever darkening world when we have our Supreme Court making decisions about what marriage is? God already ruled on that, and it's not what they said. You know, they they, they want to say this and that and the other thing. Okay, we're in an ever darkening world, but the truth hasn't changed. God hasn't changed. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, forever. Okay, what are we supposed to do? Run and hide? No. No, if they persecute you in this city, flee into another. Okay, yeah, we, we have, you know, I'm glad God doesn't just say, okay, stand there and take the bullet. God gives us a job to do, but you know what? We have a light. We have a truth to proclaim. And it's not always going to be easy. It's not always going to be easy. In the last days, perilous times shall come. You know, and so we are the light of the world. And so we need to make sure that we are shining. And it doesn't always come, things don't always go the way that they really should be. But you know what? We can leave it to a God that's going to make sure everything comes out in the end. By the way, never forget. As dark as it seems right now, you know, I, I don't watch that many sports anymore. When I was in high school, I'd, I'd like to watch football and such, but since I went to college, I've kind of gotten out of it. But I love those games where it's a nail-biter. You know, it's like, man, who's going to win? Yeah, I may not even care about either team, you know. I, I'll root for anybody that's, you know, playing Notre Dame, um, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I root for Michigan and Michigan State and um, – then I'll, uh, I'll root for the Buckeyes as long as they're not playing uh, Michigan or Michigan State. So that's, I'm probably in the wrong place to be saying that in Ohio. But, uh, but anyway, <clears throat> the point I'm trying to make is this. You know, those games that are a blowout, even if my team is blowing them out, it's just it's not that exciting. It's 75 to, t- to 3. Ugh. Is there another game on? Yeah, it's, it's just not, there's not much excitement there. I, I hate to liken the Bible and history to a ball game, but it doesn't matter how dark it looks. It's in the back of the book, and we win. He comes back on a horse. <laughs> there's blood about, you know, this deep on a bridle. We win. We win. We don't have to be ashamed. We don't have to run. We come back, and woo, we're on the winning side. But we have a job to do while we're here. Amen. You know, I have a, a uh, I don't know if it's the 30th or the 31st. My grandpa turned 99 today or yesterday. You know, there's something still that my grandpa is supposed to do. Maybe it's just simply to encourage his grandson. I don't know. I, I thought the last time we left about three years ago now to go back to China, we came back for about a month, and you know, I figured that, that was probably the last time. I'm not a, I don't tend to be a, an emotional fella. I probably should be a little more. But I don't tend to be that emotional. But I was emotional when I was saying bye to my 90, at that time I guess he would have been 96-year-old grandpa. So I thought, this is probably the last time I'm going to see him. And here he is. I get to stay in his house and go visit him. It, it's great. But you know what? If, God, if you're still breathing air, if you're still alive, if you're still here, God has something for you to do. And by the way, there's still hope. Well, you don't know what I've done. You don't know how I've messed up. Um, If you're still alive, then there's still hope. There's still something for you to do. Oh, wretched man that I am! Yeah, God knows. Yeah, there's that battle that's going on. But keep fighting it. Fail forward, fall forward. A just man falls seven times and rises up again. You keep going, you keep going, you keep... Plodding along, and if you fall down, get back up. You fall down, get back up. How did I get on that? That wasn't in my notes. Romans 13. Let's go to Romans 13. So if things don't always go your way, just remember, it's not all over. It's not over. Sometimes when it looks dark, sometimes when things aren't going right, that's when they get to say, hey, they didn't react like I would have. You know, there were people in, uh, I believe it was uh, Belgian Congo, 
they were, they, the missionaries came there and they didn't know whether or not to believe what the gospel they were preaching. And so they devised this plan. And the plan was is they were going to poison them. True story. They were going to poison them. And so what happened was is these missionaries began to die. They'd get sick and they'd die. And they didn't know why. And so there's this big reunion, so to speak, and the man was the last one that knew this, and he's the one that stood up and said, I, I, I want to tell you all this. And he told them this story. He said, we poison them, but as they're dying one by one, we saw how they died, and they died differently. And that's when we knew we could believe them. So those missionaries came and were poisoned and died on the mission field, not knowing that those people would believe because of their faithful witness. Things aren't always going to go the way that you want them to. They don't. If you've been in the Christian life, you realize that. And by the way, those that are in the world, the things don't always go perfect either. Just because you're in the Christian life doesn't mean everything's going to be hunky-dory, wonderful, awesome, better roses. That's not how it works. There's going to be difficult times whether you're in God's will or out of God's will. So you might as well be in God's will having somebody hold your hand to go with that you can talk to. Boy, he's an awesome friend. And by the way, he'll never fail you. We all will. Boy, have I failed him? Oh, many times. But boy, he never, he's right there. He's right there. Boy, I'm thankful for his spankings too. It means he loves me. Romans 13. Romans 13. Verse 1, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? By the way, we're told to pray for those that are in authority in Timothy. And we're supposed to pray for those people that are in that, uh, those positions of authority. Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, or avenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Well, how much? You know, so don't you wish sometimes God would put in so much, you know? Anyway. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. I hasten. There, uh, Roger Staubach. Am I saying that name right? This is before my time. 1970, what is it? Staubach. okay. It was before my time. I was born in 87, you know. This is in 71. But the, the, if you're old enough to remember that, and I won't ask who is, because anyway. Um, Cowboys uh, of the Super Bowl there, you know, he founded a source of trial. You know, Coach Landry, uh, he would send in all the plays. You know, and it was kind of a pride issue with him. You know, he wanted to, he wanted to be the one calling the plays. You know, I, I'm the quarterback. Shouldn't I be the one calling the shots? But even though he knew that Coach Landry had a great, had a genius mind for football, that was a source of trial for him. But he said that once he realized, he said, once I faced up to the issue of obedience, once I learned to obey, harmony, fulfillment, and victory followed. You know, we have a God that if I can liken it again to football, God's up in the grandstands. He can see everything. We're down below. A lot of times we can see right here. You know, we can see through his word. He gives us wisdom and he allows us to, but, but he sees the big picture. He sees what's going on everywhere. I think it's so amazing when you find somebody from a different country meeting someone from across the world and they, God, wow, it's such, how coincidental that we would meet right here. It's not coincidence. God, did, God said, okay, today your car is going to break down. And it's going to break down right here. It's not going to go any further. And it's just going to so happen that a missionary is going to walk by at this exact time and you're going to get saved, your family's going to get saved, Wow, what an amazing story. God knew it. We have to trust him. We have to follow him. And God has a plan for your life. We just have to follow. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And uh, probably many of you know it. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and 
Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Lean not. Lean. Not push. Lean. Lean not unto our own understanding. But boy, that's difficult. I want to be in control. I want to know what it is. And God says, no, Steve, that's not how it's going to work. You trust me. You follow me. You do what I want because I've got it all figured out. Ephesians 5.18 tells us to be filled with the Spirit. Acts 1.8, Jesus tells them, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. They continued in one accord in Acts chapter 1, verse 14. And then what happens in Acts chapter 2? Can we all turn there? Acts chapter 2. I'm almost done. I didn't ask Pastor what time you all got done. Probably was 10 minutes ago. I don't know. <laughs> Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. Boy, as a missionary, I uh, love the book of Acts. Try to learn from it, trying to see what I can do better and how we can do that. And Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Why? Because they obeyed. Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power. Wait in Jerusalem until I, I send my spirit on you. They were all with one accord. There was prayer. But can I, can I boil it down to the, obviously those things? But they obeyed. They obeyed and did what God wanted them to do. Jesus told them what to do. They had to obey it. They had to do it. And we see the results of it in verse 41. Turn a couple pages over there if you would. Look at verse 41. This is after Peter's sermon. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Wow. God did that work. Specific time, specific place, people that are tuned into him that are obedient. And the Lord added, verse 47, the Lord added to the church, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. They obeyed. They did what God wanted them to do. So obedience just isn't for kids. Children obey our parents, see? No, but I believe it's training for us to train them from, to listen to their parents, to listen to their authorities, to listen to God. God wants us to do His will. But we have to be willing to obey. And if we hang on to our pride and we say, no, I think of Jonah. Let's go to Jonah. You know, even the Bible talks about Jesus. Jesus was subject unto them. You know, think about how difficult that was. You know, there's, a, there's a lot that's there. You know, but Jonah. Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah. <clears throat> Jonah chapter 1 and verse 1. <clears throat> Jonah chapter 1 and verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Okay, so Jonah, I got a job for you to do. I want you to go to Nineveh. Now, let's think about Nineveh. Let's think about Jonah. Okay, Nineveh is the head of the Assyrian Empire. All right, they got a bunch of people. Um, they are foretold that they're going to be destroyed in Nahum. Zephaniah predicted that they be destroyed, the city and the empire. Uh, it's a very wealthy place. You got from the east and the west, you got a lot of wealth coming into that city. Arguably one of the greatest cities of the ancient empires. Greatest cities. Nineveh. And they're the enemy of Israel. They're the enemy of Judah. They are extremely violent. A lot of tyranny that goes. In 722 B.C., they defeated the northern kingdom of Israel. And in 701, about 21 years later, they almost captured Judah. Very, very cruel. Name is, name is, uh, excuse me, Nahum 3.1 kind of gives a, a question, so to speak, 
that emphasizes their brutality. Okay, they're the enemy. Okay, Jonah, I want you to go to your enemy, and I want you to preach to him. Wasn't what Jonah wanted. Lord, I want you to destroy them. But you see, God loves. God loves the world. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. Do you realize that Paul, Saul, was actively pursuing, trying to kill Christians? And he's going to yet another city, and God says, Hey, Paul, Saul, i got something for you to do. Sometimes we look at our enemies, those we, that are enemies to our cause, and we say, What in the world could God possibly want to do with them? He might want to use them as an Apostle Paul to help reach so many people for him. Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. Do we find a very happy, obedient preacher here? Look at verse 3. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. It's about a, a year and a half trip. Three years round journey for where Jonah was going. You know what? If I can get far enough from where God wants me to go, he won't send me. We're not going to go through the whole story tonight. God's people said, amen. But Jonah doesn't want to obey. And so God says, okay, I'm going to send you a storm. I'm going to, you're going to get thrown off. What was Jonah thinking there? Maybe he was thinking, hey, fine, I'll just die. Hey, guys, throw me overboard. I don't, you know, but that wasn't what God had in mind. All right, Jonah, I got you a big fish, buddy. And that big fish is going to take you for a little ride. You're going to go down to the ocean. Except there's not going to be no windows. You're not going to be seeing any interesting things out the, out the windows. You're going to be down where the seaweed around your head. You're going to be down there smelling um, big fish vomit. You're going to have little dead fish floating by you. And it's going to be really dark. And you're going to probably have acid eating on you. You might come out looking really different. And he was so stubborn that about three days later he finally says, Okay, all right. And God says, okay, now that I've got your attention, now do you want to obey? God has something for each and every person in here to do, me included. But you have to be willing to obey. God needs spirit-filled Christians who say, garbage at your disposal, if you will. Now, God loves you. You're not garbage. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. You're worth dying for. He died for you and resurrected. God loves you. Vessels who will be used. Whatever you want. However you want me. You want me to stay right here doing exactly what I am? Just grow my capacity to give or teach a Sunday school class or work in the bus route or work in RU or the different ministries that your church has. Support your pastor. Take good care of your pastor. Whatever it is that God wants you to do. Are you yielded to it? Are you willing to obey? Because you can't run from God. I think Jonah pretty obviously demonstrated that. There's other passages of Scripture that tell us that. Psalm 139, verses 7 through 12. I won't read all of them, but Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I, make the, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me. You can't run from God. You might as well just obey Him. Yeah, I think of the story. I don't know exactly who it was. I've heard it told. I assume that it's true. But uh, the older lady that was running out of wood for her fire. And she prayed and prayed and said, Lord, I pray that you would fill my wood. Fill my wood box. And she prayed and prayed and basically it was down to empty. And her atheist neighbor knew that she was praying. And he said uh, one day she went to church and she came back and it was filled. And he said, came over a little later and says, Yeah, I saw that uh, your wood box was getting empty, and I guess God wasn't going to fill it, so I filled it for him. 
hey, buddy, you don't even believe in God, but you just answered, God used you, even though you don't believe in him, to answer her prayer. You're in the will of God? That's where I want to be. I want to be yielded to him. But you know, I don't know if I want to be a sermon illustration that a pastor gets up and says, well, I want to tell you about missionary Stephen Fry. Or maybe he won't use my name, but he'll use me and my illustration as a warning to others not to do what Steve Fry did. Which one do you think I want to be? Which one do you want to be? Do you want to be the one that says, God, I'm yielded to you. Please use me. I'll obey you. I'll trust in you. I don't know what you're doing. I'm going to try to use wisdom. I'm going to, I'm going to try to do everything that you show me that I know in your word, but... Oh, boy, I don't really want to do that. Maybe you don't tithe yet. Tithe. Can I tell you something? God will make that 90% last more than that 100% will. <laughs> Obey what God says. Take those steps. You'll never regret that you did. Amen. Obedience. Very, very simple message tonight. But I pray that God will take it and use it in your heart. Are you yielded to Him? Are you yielded to His Spirit? Are you open to whatever... God has for you. I'm a missionary. Can I tell you something? When I was a kid, I wasn't real big on being a missionary. And if I'm going to be a missionary to somewhere, don't send me to those people that got eyes like this. Just what I thought. But guess where God sent me? Amen. And can I tell you something? I went back there in January for about a week on a trip. And I felt like I was home felt home there before that. Home. I wouldn't have thought that if you'd have told me that. But boy, am I glad that so far in my life, and I've sure failed. I'm not, please, please understand the angle I'm coming at. But in my own life, I've seen God work. And he wants to do the same for you. I trust that there's many of you, this is a reminder you're already doing that. But maybe there's one that you're kind of, it's not what you want to do. Can I encourage you? Follow God and his will. Let's pray and I'll turn it over to Pastor. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your word. Thank you that you love us. I pray that you would use this for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. With your heads bowed as we have just a brief invitation. Obedience. Years ago, I was just a teenager, and I heard our pastor say, you'll never be in trouble if you just always say yes to God. When you get in trouble is when you say no. I wonder if God's speaking to your heart tonight about something. There's an area you've been struggling, and you, you've you kind of been resisting. But tonight you say, you know what, preacher, the message was for me. That was God speaking to me to say yes. And I need to, I have an error in my life. I have an, uh, something God's dealing with me about. And I just need to obey him. And he spoke to my heart about it tonight. Could I pray for you? Would you slip your hand up and say, Pastor, that's me? Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Maybe God's dealing with your heart about being willing to go. Willing to be a missionary. Willing to go wherever God wants you to go. It may be staying right where you are. But are you willing to go if God wants you to go somewhere? Are you willing to be obedient? I'm going to pray. We'll stand to our feet. Lisa will play an invitation. God has spoken to your heart, and he's tugging at your heart. Obey him tonight and do what he's bidding you to do. Father, bless this invitation. Thank you for speaking to hearts tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the... The, the truth, again, from your word, that if we love you, we'll keep your commandments. We'll desire to obey you. And so, Lord, help us to be obedient to you in these next few moments, whatever it is you're dealing with our hearts about, and I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, stand to your feet. As you stand, Lisa will play. She plays the invitation. The altar is open. You respond to the Lord tonight. That's right.
Father, we thank you now for this evening. We thank you, Lord, for the good message tonight from your word, the reminder to all of us of being obedient to you. And Father, I pray that we would trust in the Lord with all our heart and not lean to our own understanding, that in all our ways we'll acknowledge you and allow you to direct our path. Father, we pray your blessing on the fries and that you'll continue to uh, supply their every need, uh, help them to raise their needed support, and be able to get back to the land of China and use them to reach many lost souls for you there. Father, dismiss us now with your care. Make us mindful you go with us from this place, and Father, help us to please you in all we do this week. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Brother Fry, thank you. They'll be at the back right by their display. Feel free to stop back and uh, let them know uh, what a blessing that was to you tonight and uh, get a chance to see him. Let's sing 337. Take your songbook. Let's sing 337. Trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. All right. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word. Oh, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. God bless you. You're dismissed. Choir, come right on up.